Welcome to another segment of Behind the Scenes of the Waltons. Today, we're doing another Ask Judy. If you're enjoying these, please do like and subscribe and share them with anyone you think might enjoy them. And do keep posting those comments below because that is where I pull questions for my Ask Judy segments. I've been asked a couple times about braces, uh, cast wearing braces. Uh, sometimes I guess with shows, there's a lot of a lot that goes into uh, actors figuring out how to deal with needing braces during those years. When I was coming up as an actor, agents tended to say, go away until your braces are off. Obviously when you're doing a series, you can't do that. Nobody in our cast wore braces. So we either just dealt with our teeth being crooked or dealt with it later or were fortunate enough at the time not to need them. Uh, so I do understand there were some stories uh, from Little House on the Prairie, so maybe you can source some of those uh, those cast members uh, to find out what they did. Judy asked about the wedding gown that Mary Ellen wore marrying Kurt and wanted to know where it came from and doesn't seem to remember, but did Aaron wear the same one? The wedding gown I wore when I married Kurt was from the wardrobe department. Uh, so I'm not sure where it came from before that, if it was part of stock or they sourced it someplace specifically for the episode. Uh, the, the gown that Mary wore when she married Paul was actually her own mother's wedding gown that she used for that episode. So that was pretty special for her. So neither one of, obviously Mary's gown was never used again. I don't, nobody else on the on the series ever wore the gown that Mary Ellen wore. And when I married Jonesy, I wore a lovely suit. So I did not reuse that original gown when I remarried either. Next question. Kay asks, which episode taught you the most about life? Wow, that's a great question. I feel like I learned so much during the years of the Waltons that so many episodes taught me different things. The firestorm always stands out to me, that that whole message about burning books and and what happened around the campfire there with Mrs. Brimmer then reading that German Bible and and that whole message that John Boy was trying to get across to people that if you try to censor and, and, and destroy books and, and things that people can't know then things that could be important or dangerous. So that one stands out to me. The lessons from episodes like The Scholar about illiteracy. Um, we tackled a lot of subjects. So I was so proud of the show for that that we took on some of these topics and addressed them. So it was it was an ongoing learning experience for me. And then just behind the scenes stuff, like learning to milk a cow. I grew up in the city, what do I know about milking cows? Or dealing with some of these animals that came through. I mean, who gets to play with a peacock? <laughs> so it was, it was wonderful. It was work, it was, it was a joy, I learned. I mean, what more can you ask for? Thanks for thanks for that question and raising all those great points for me. Christopher asked, did you ever go mind blank on a line and ad-libbed? Definitely went blank on lines occasionally. There would be times I'd be doing a scene and I was going through and I was doing it and I'd be like, I have no idea what my next line is. And the other actor would be talking and I'd be like, just responding to what that actor was saying, going, I sure hope when it's my time to talk, I remember what I'm supposed to say. Sometimes I did, sometimes I didn't. If it was a moderate ad lib, like I changed a word or something, I they usually let it slide, but I rarely could come up with great ad libs. <laughs> now on stage, and I think Christopher mentioned that, you, you have no choice. You can't, on screen, you can go, oh, cut. So I got, I can't remember my line. Uh, or just line, you know, and, and the, the script supervisor will throw you a line and you pause for a second, you reset, and you just go on because then they can edit because each time there's a pause, there's an opportunity for the editor to make a cut. So as long as 
if you fumble or something like that, even if you know the line and you fumble, if you're just blah, 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 and then you just pause, reset, and start the line. There's room for the editor then to get in there and clean it up. But if you go, blah, 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 oh yeah, but here's my line. There's no place for a clean cut. So we learned things like that. On stage, of course, you can't retake. So you always just have to say something. And I've had those experiences where I went completely blank. Fortunately, not very often. Uh, in one case, I was on stage alone and had to come up with something on my own. Uh, if there's other actors, they will usually help you and you guide each other back to where you're supposed to be. So all those things happen, and that is part of the thrill and excitement of doing live theater. <laughs> J-Mom asked if it was hard to fit in when you went to public school. It was in the 70s when we were in public school in between seasons of the Waltons. Uh, the Waltons wasn't considered cool in Los Angeles in the 70s. Kids that I went to high school with were watching other things or, I don't know, they just weren't into the Waltons. Or they, yeah, I mean, I think they just thought they were too cool for it. So people would make fun of me. I'd walk down the halls and go, oh, where's John Boy? Good night, Mary Ellen. You know, so they, they'd do things like that. What was interesting to me was that they seemed to know an awful lot of this show that they were making fun of. So I always kind of thought, well, how do they know so much if they think it's a silly show and they don't watch it? So I think I caught him on that one. <laughs> Next question. Jeff asked, what was it like when Ralph or Richard directed and how did the crossover work when they were also in a scene? Ralph and Richard were great to work with as directors because they were actors. They and they knew the show so well, it was very seamless to work with them as directors. I remember Ralph in particular liked to get very creative with some of his shots and what he could do with them and where he put the camera and stuff like that. Uh, he was fascinated by directing and actually directed, wrote and directed a film called On the Nickel about homeless people, which was a, a passionate subject for him. So he did that film all on his own. Uh, I think Ralph directed more episodes than, than Richard did. Uh, I have, since the Waltons, I have gone on to do writing and directing, and there have been times where I have directed something I'm in. I, what happens can, can be a number of different ways, but when you're rehearsing, usually you will have a stand and somebody walk your part for you so that visually as a director, you can see what's going to happen and look at it through the camera. Uh, then when you step in, you trust that the camera operator is guiding you relative to did you get the shot you wanted. You have to know your own performance. That's the main thing. You have to, which on a series when you've been doing, you know your levels. You know what your performance is about, who your character is, what those interactions are. So I think it was much easier for them with something like the Waltons by the time they directed it wasn't a question about what's my character doing. Uh, when I directed things I was in, I would just make sure I knew everything I was doing as an actor really well because there was no time for me to prep really between scenes as an actor. So I treated it like a play and just learned everything before I showed up to do the show, to do the, the TV show, so that I could just at any time step into a scene and I knew that scene. Then I would... Same thing, I would have someone walk what I was doing so that I could physically see what was going on. By the time I was doing it, we were working digitally so I could look back at things if I needed to. But usually you're moving so fast that you don't want to take the time to keep looking back at takes. There were a couple of people who I trusted uh, who were also actors that I would, when I was doing a scene, I would sometimes say, could you watch this scene? This is what I'm looking to do. Just let me know. They were people I really trusted. Let me know if if that read that you believed that performance or I know a couple of my bad habits. So I said, watch out for this and this and let me know if I do that because <laughs> those are my bad habits. So things like that. I think each actor who also directs finds how they do that for themselves. Thank you so much for your questions. That's what I have for you on this segment of Ask Judy. I will be back with more behind the scenes of the Waltons and more episodes and segments of Ask Judy. Thanks for watching.